All right, hello again, everyone. So I'm just here with a, another tutorial. This is going to be on the basics of edge flow. I was recently asked to um, explain kind of the basics of 3D modeling. Originally, I thought I would talk about um, using 3D software and kind of the basic tools that you can use, like the extrude tool or the cut faces tool or something like that. Um, but that's something that I find is very easy to learn. Uh, there's lots of other videos online and there's tons of information of that already. So instead I thought I'd talk about the basics of edge flow and how to make a 3D mesh in an optimal way. So uh, what is edge flow? It's essentially how you lay out the wireframe of your 3D mesh. I'd like to also say why we need it so you know it, you feel like you're doing this for a reason because Edge flow can be a little bit daunting um, once in a while. So what you need it for is um, clean deformations and smoothing. Uh, for instance, when an object is an like or a, a 3D character is animating, you have to have proper topology so that the limbs will move accordingly. Or sorry, they'll move and they also won't crumple in weird ways. Or if you're smoothing an object, it has to maintain its form when it's smooth. So the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, or show, is a um, what is an edge loop and also I want to talk about contours. I'll start with contours. So here is how uh, you have, or here's kind of an idea of edge flow. For instance on the cylinder you have um, rings that wrap around the cylinder so you don't end up with uh, you know weird lines that are going in all weird places like there's a triangle here or something weird like that no you want to actually follow the form for instance in this object here's the basic geometry and here is extra cuts that kind of follow the shape of the object which gets me into edge loops, which I mentioned a little too early, um, which are um, here is an edge loop. All right, so the other rings around um, around the eye or the mouth, or basically the different objects. You could actually see it in my contours. Um, like this is an edge loop. Um, essentially, you you need those for proper deformation. Uh, for instance, if the mouth were to open, um, you'd have these kind of squish together and stretch out kind of thing. Uh, if if it didn't follow the follow the mouth, it would crumple, and you'd maybe get like some weird creases when the mouth opens and closes. Um, a better example of that would be with this arm. So you have edge loops that go around the arm. Um, like so, and um, you essentially want it to be looping around where the object will bend. So, if since the arm is moving upwards like this, or you know it's going up and down, I should say that was yeah that that's better. Um, yeah, so uh, you want it so that you follow how it bends. If you have um, again anything else than, other than that you'll you'll get some weird bending and it's not going to look too nice. You know one other thing I wanted to mention that I forgot to mention at the beginning was about what an edge loop is and what is not an edge loop. This is an edge loop this is not an edge loop. Uh, the reason I just wanted to mention that was because I found a lot of beginners make this mistake with their uh, with their models. Um, I've had people come to me and say, well, my mouth isn't deforming properly. And I look at their face and they have this mouth and then they have geometry that's like this. And you have these squares in the corner and they think that because this Square box follows or goes around the mouth that it's an edge loop, but it's not. If you were to open the mouth now, you're gonna where these squares are. It's going to bend right here, 
and it's going to look really weird. It's it's not going to follow the shape very well, and you're not going to be able to get, for instance, the laugh line around the face because you don't have these loops here, and it's just not going to work. Um, so that's the thing to keep in mind. An edge loop, you want to have each edge connect to the next, and eventually it'll loop around until you have a full circle. Um, so that's something that's very important when you want your edge flow to follow a surface like an arm, for instance. Oh, so I don't know, this doesn't really look like an arm, but that's my arm, and there's my hand. Look at my awesome hand. It's pretty great. So um, other cases where you need it is for smoothing, which I mentioned earlier as well. Um, so if you're smoothing an object, so on the left you have one cube which um, has no extra edge loops, it just basically has the silhouette, um, so it has just enough geometry to get your form, but if you smooth the object it becomes a circle. The reason for this is that um, it's just it's just how the smoothing interpolates. You can do like a linear smoothing, but um, if you want to do like a proper clean smoothing, it's going to give you kind of like a curve. Um, so what you do is you add extra cuts. Now, one thing to be aware of um, is it you can do this and it'll get you you know, a nice surface, right? It's now the cube that you want. You got some, you know, nice, slightly smooth edges as opposed to completely sharp, which is unrealistic, which is what you would have if you had not smoothed it. Um, however, you'll notice that this section has spaced out a lot. Um, I'm going to grab a darker color here. Yeah, so this is spaced out a lot. You don't want that because, um, say, you have a texture on it. Uh, the texture information will originally say, okay, I'm applying part of your image here, which is originally a small space, but as soon as you smooth it, um, you'll get some stretching going on because the texture that was meant to be in a small area will now be spaced out a lot further. So what you'll often have to do is you add extra cuts in your geometry so that it'll prevent it from uh, from stretching too much. You can see here, like, there's a little bit of stretching, but it's not too bad. And this is this should be decent. Normally, you'd have your main edge loop that follows your geometry, and then you have one that's kind of closer, and then one in the middle, like that. Um, another thing to keep in mind, other than just contours, is anatomy. Um, when you're doing a human character, for instance, or an animal or a creature or something like that, in this example here, uh, we need to have loops around things that move, right? So you have to have the loop that goes around the mouth um, so that you can have it open and close or the jaw stretching or the eyes blinking or things like that. But another thing to consider is um, the muscles. It'll help you kind of find out where to place things. For instance, the loop around the mouth is kind of like the orbicularis oris, or around the eyes is the orbicularis oculi. Um, now you also have the muscles that are going along the cheek, and you'll notice in in the mesh you have a very similar thing here, where it follows that muscle. So all those lines are going in that direction. At the same time, you have to know which muscles you want to consider and which you don't, depending on the style of your character. For instance, if we look at an arm. Now, ideally, like I said earlier, you want to follow the muscle structure. So if it's a more realistic character, um, you'll, you'll say, okay, I want to um, follow the, uh, the muscles here, and, you know, follow the pecs, and... You know, follow the biceps and the triceps, right? And then you have the flow that kind of goes like this. If you're making like a real, really realistic character, you want to follow the muscles because if you're, if you're like, if you were to bend your arm, um, this muscle would bulge, for example, and you know, you'd get more creasing, and you can.
get that creasing in your geometry um, with with a, like edge flow that follows those muscles. However, it's not uncommon just to see it goes straight down like this and you just have your edge lips like this on a cartoon-like character because you simplify it. There's still enough for, you know, bulging, but you're not going to get like this muscle interacting with this muscle. So those are just things to consider when you're building the topology of your mesh. The next thing I wanted to mention were triangles and uh, you often hear the first like when you're first learning about topology or modeling, uh, you should avoid triangles completely. Um, which in a lot of cases you want to avoid triangles, um, but not always. Or sometimes you don't need to bother. For instance, um, on the sphere, you do want to worry about it because if you have the triangle, um, whoops, sorry. Yeah. So if you have the triangle in the circle here like this, you have a very obvious pinch on the smooth surface. However, if the surface is flat, for instance on the top of this cylinder, this surface will look the same as this surface, even though there's triangles on it when it's smooth. So that's a time that you can have triangles. Another time you can have triangles is when you know the mesh isn't going to be smooth, for instance, in real-time rendering um, for games and things like that, you'll have, um, you'll in fact want to use triangles because at the end of the day, real-time renderers tend to triangulate your mesh anyway. Um, so the ideal thing is to have, um, to use triangles to get the silhouette that you want. So the, in, in those cases you just want to get your outside form. Like I had mentioned at the beginning where you just have very minimalistic um, edges in my contours here. This first block. Um, so this first block has just what it needs for the size. Well you could get rid of this and make this a triangle but that's getting you know low too far. Um, and here you want more because you want it to be able to be smooth. So this would be like an animation mesh and this would be a game mesh or something like that. So one last thing I want to mention is poles. Um, you'll often find poles in your geometry and they're okay. There's just, you just have to look out for them. If you don't, um, if you don't have enough geometry around them, they will create pinching um, or like little bumps on your surface. So they're okay, but you, you want to keep that in mind um, when when you're when you're uh, creating your mesh. So that's essentially the basics of uh, of topology and everything that I wanted to cover. I will be making more videos about topology, uh, not just topology, but about modeling and and those basic principles for getting started for um, People just don't really know where to start and what to look for. So if this was helpful, please let me know in the comments. Um, I always like to hear if I can do something better or if I just didn't explain things properly. Um, I haven't made many tutorial videos, so it's still something that I'm, you know, practicing and trying to get better at. So um, in that sense, you know, help me to help you kind of thing. <laughs> um, so again uh, thank you for watching this tutorial hope it helped